Welcome to what has, since a very short time ago, become my very own kitchen. Imagine that, I've never had a kitchen of my own before. Uh, so, uh, I've spent the last few days cleaning this place out. It's been, uh, shall we say, rather worn in over time. The entire interior is about 10 years old and it shows it's been smoked in, there's been animals here, it's been uh, just a bit of a shoddy place. But uh, since I have put so much time into cleaning the ceilings and walls, I figured out we might as well uh, go a while saving up to redo it properly, if ever. Uh, and the thing I'm going to focus on today is getting rid of this horrifying terror of a light. So this is a quad spotlight, a GU10, uh, 230 volts, uh, cheap old lamp. It does almost nothing uh, and it's got aluminium foil on it to redirect the light up into the ceiling to give it some kind of diffraction but this thing is nasty cheap and frankly I'm afraid to get a shock if I even dare touch it. Uh, so that thing is going in the trash or oh, I'm relocating it somewhere else and I've spent a bit of money in the charity shop getting some other lights. So this big guy here cost me the grand total of uh, 12 euros. It's a five spotlight light. And these guys over here cost me a grand total of six euros for, no, five euros for the both of them. Uh, and uh, they are all in pretty decent condition and all of them are higher quality than the one currently installed. Uh, however, that's not where I've spent the vast majority of my money because I have actually splurged and purchased 12 uh, of these uh, dimmable Osram 5 watt or 4.6 watt LED bulbs. Uh, these are 350 lumen rated so they're pretty decent uh, light per watt uh, and they will put it way more light than I need. So to go with those I've invested in this uh, cheapo Class Olsen light dimmer which is probably entirely out of focus. Oh uh, well. Uh, this is a leading or trailing edge dimmer. It's sold as a 100 watt LED dimmer, even though it says 400 watts inside. No idea what's going on there. Uh, and this works quite well with all of these lights. So I've got it set up and it can dim uh, these three down from about uh, 1 watt uh, all the way up to the 15 watt rated power. So my plan is to basically run these at about 30% power or so and that's going to give me much increased LED lifetime. Now the actual installation of the bulbs is going to be a bit unique because I'm planning to install these guys on the walls. Uh, the big guy is going to be sitting right up here by the window and the smaller IKEA lights, one is going to go up there in the ceiling and the other one I'm thinking is probably going to go on the wall up here right above the door to the basement because this is the main kitchen area where you cook your food and this is where you want most of your light. Uh, there are a couple of light fixtures uh, in here, one in the, in the kitchen fan thing and a, a little 13 watt uh, compact uh, well, fluorescent uh, over there by the sinks and these work decently well but they just provide light up by the wall. It's really not very pleasant cooking. Uh, in that light and as you can imagine that thing does absolutely nothing if it's dark. Uh, so my plan is to have the big guy with its uh, five uh, LED uh, spotlights shining right up in the ceiling here basically illuminating uh, pretty much half the ceiling and since this is a bit of a half glossy color of this uh, ceiling I'm thinking it I'm probably going to manage to basically bounce the light over and out, over and down on uh, the sink there. Uh, this room looks big, that's just because you're viewing it through a fisheye lens. At the moment it's just uh, about a couple of meters across and I think this is going to work quite well. Uh, but uh, I also don't think just that one is going to do it on its own. So the little IKEA light going on here with its three 5 watt LED spotlights can either be configured to kind of shine into the ceiling here or down on the bench there. Uh, however, 
for direct lighting, I'm going to mostly rely on one of the IKEA lights going in the ceiling there in place of a horrid mess that's right there right now. Uh, and uh, maybe if I feel uh, driven enough, I might uh, clean and clean up and relocate this light to this wall here, allowing it to shine up into the ceiling above the coffee maker bench there and perhaps shine a bit of direct light down as well. Uh, electrically, this proves a bit of a challenge because the electrics in this house are absolutely horrible. Uh, this light is on its, uh, it's on an entirely different circuit than most stuff. Uh, it's on the same circuit as uh, two power outlets down there and a bunch of other rooms over there. Uh, whereas uh, we have a few other outlets, uh, that guy there and some spattered around and these lights and uh, pretty much everything else runs on a separate circuit. Uh, and uh, this is the circuit we're going to be using uh, because it's laid, it's basically an additional circuit, it's laid out externally along, along everything. Uh, whereas the one the ceiling light is running on is an internal circuit in the wall and uh, these wires are in such bad condition uh, I'm not going to touch them. Uh, I'm just going to leave them be until I have the time and energy to properly redo these. So uh, my plan is to, right now to just uh, put an external uh, wall box with the dimmer right here above the current light switch and wire that to the new lights, save for of course the one in the ceiling which is going to go in the original circuit and not be dimmable. Uh, I don't think that's going to be an issue since we're going to have uh, five, six, seven, eight dimmable bulbs anyway. And this is going to be a more of a direct light thing you just use while cooking. Uh, wiring wise, I think I'm going to splice in uh, right about there, uh, put one light there, then pull a five conductor wire to right across there, going down there to the dimmer box, uh, allowing me to get a few. Uh, lighting wires up back from the dimmer box that saves us from running several wires down the wall that's just going to be unnecessarily ugly and then I'm going to split it out uh, and taking one of the extra leads going back there to the light and split that out to go along there to up there where we put the big lamp and uh, that's about as far as I've thought about it uh, right now uh, if I if I make really good time, I'm just going to keep running a wire all the way over there through that cupboard because there's wiring running through there anyway, and put an extra light over there. But that's a bit optional. It's easy to expand since we're not doing anything in wall, since that's basically a lost cause in this house without ripping the entire thing apart. Uh, so it's really a, a quite easy job. So. Uh, Let's just uh, get to work starting to put stuff together. Yeah, this is obviously to be a dimmer on a test. Going to have to disassemble that and start unpacking really expensive. These are 10 euros a piece, so they bloody well better last for 25 years. They state ruined me. And fast forward a few hours and we've got an almost completed installation. We've got wiring run and the light fixtures installed. So uh, that's the positioning I went with for the giant five light one. And we have our IKEA tiny thing over there. Uh, now there's a bunch of trickery going on. Uh, as you might be able to tell, this one's got a very long cord. And that is because this actually rotates. It's only mounted on a wooden block with one screw in the middle. And that's because I'm not sure at which angle I'm going to be able to get the best spread of light coming out of this thing. So I thought I'd leave my options open. I use flexible wiring to enter it so I can actually rotate it without breaking the copper. And then there's a bit of slack inside the light so I can just poke that extra bit of cord inside it once I've decided on which orientation to mount it. Uh, wiring wise, this is very, very, very simple. I've used a uh, five conductor wire uh, from this connection point onwards uh, where the black one is the lighting wire and all the other are standardized coloring, uh, blue for neutral, uh, green, yellow for ground and brown for live. 
Uh, so we have, uh, if going from the incoming coming over right here, we have lava neutral and grained, uh, turning into a five conductor wire going to uh, this uh, connection point, which is just splicing down to a power socket in the bottom. And then this runs on all the way over here to a final block and down to where the dimmer will go. I've yet to install that because we're gonna have a bit of a look at it. Uh, so uh, what we have coming out here is gonna be uh, live incoming to the dimmer and neutral incoming to the dimmer. And this is gonna be the lighting wire going out to the light. So these guys are incoming and this guy's out going. The dimmer I have is nice since so you can just go between neutral at any point. You don't have to pull neutral through the dimmer as well. Uh, the gray wire is unused. And ground is of course ground, but I'm not sure about even this of ground terminal block on the dimmer. But that doesn't matter because ground goes everywhere by default. So the wire going to the left there is just a, a single free conductor wire with a black wire going over here to this final fixture, which is just a single fixture fixed single fixture connection point and it's going into the lamp. Uh, curiously, this lamp uh, actually it doesn't have a ground terminal on it. I chose to use a free conductor wire and draw ground into it anyway, uh, just uh, for the sake of it. It's uh, the most uh, a proper way of doing things, uh, but I'm kind of surprised they chose to use uh, a groundless configuration for this lamp, but never mind that. Uh, no one's going to be touching this, and I'm quite sure we're not going to get any power in the chassis. Uh, so, with that out of the way, uh, we have a bot of a dimmer left to think about, and it is a very simple design indeed. Uh, so, this thing has a four terminal blocks, we're just going to be using a three of them, and that's going to be the one of the neutrals, the live and the output. Uh, this particular dimmer uh, has the option of being set to either leading edge or trailing edge dimming, which is a very nice feature. Uh, I have it configured for leading edge, uh, for trailing edge dimming, because then we get a nice slow rise of a leading edge of a waveform going into the LED drivers, which just to cut out. Uh, and I would wager that's going to be more compatible in general because that uh, is not going to give you such sharp transients uh, if you, for instance, have a capacitive dropper in some replacement light in the future. Uh, not good to dim uh, capacitive dropper lights like that, but uh, it's probably going to be less destructive since the huge high, high, high energy harmonics pie you get in the beginning could uh, basically fry everything. So, I've just got to install this into its box. It's got all the requisite parts, dimmer knob, what have you, and then we just have to turn the power back on and give it a go. All right, and there's our dimmer installed. So, let's head over to a horrible old fuse box. I have beeped everything out and nothing that's su not supposed to beep is beeping. So, uh, let's... Uh, See what happens. I'll turn the power back on. Ah, I did a whole bunch of these just, just in case. I don't trust the electrics in here. But, hey, it seems to be turned on. We've got some light. So, the big fixtures working. We have all, all five lights. And the small ones keep quite blinding us as well. Excellent. So, we can get light out of them. Now, can we turn them off. We can. So that's a minimum setting. That's a maximum setting. That is that is quite bright. It's about to eight in the evening, so it's not super bright outside, but we'll compare it to that thing. That's a difference. That's a major difference. Jeez. That thing's pathetic. You can barely even tell when you turn it on. Excellent, see? So, uh, now I'm just gonna uh, probably swap this out for the final IKEA fixture just to have something that isn't so incredibly ugly. 
Oh, just look at that thing. Yuck. Ah, it's full of garbage. Uh, yeah, you are going to die. All right, the hours have rushed by and we are done and cleaned up. So I read for a big reveal. Isn't that lovely? So that's the minimum power setting. And if we ramp it up, we get pretty decent lighting. And I've swapped out the horrible fitting. And that gives us about 100 lux extra on the kitchen area because I have my little dinky light meat and I've been running around here poking everywhere. So uh, light levels uh, with everything turned on, we have about 200, a bit over 250 at the oven, about 200 that entire area. Uh, generally, uh, the room is about 100 lux in the center. Uh, the do uh, dinner table is very evenly lit at a exactly 100 with very very soft light just look at that lack of shadow it's a very very comfortable light uh, just what you need when you want to chill out after a long day coming home eating something greasy and unhealthy uh, i'm quite happy how this has turned out uh, except i still want a light over there uh, and uh, that's going to be the biggest project thus far because I need to run the wire all the way through there. It's not going to happen today, but uh, I think I might hit the charity shop again. They had uh, a few more uh, light fixtures available. Might pick something uh, fitting and just do the same thing here. Uh, maybe a three or four light fixture to get just a bit more light because uh, uh, this bench by far is the darkest. It's a bit 60 lux, which uh, it's a, a bit on the dark side. It's just full of crap of a coffee maker right now. If that's subject to change, I might uh, repurpose this to be more of a cooking bench in the future. But uh, it's dark, dark and depressing. Uh, but otherwise, God, that white balance is horrible. Otherwise, this does look pretty good. And especially when we turn it down, uh, it's, uh, a very low level, it's like, like 20 locks all over. Turning those off. Uh, this is a very, very good evening light. I, I, I'm, I don't mind this at all because I want, uh, since the kitchen in this house is a very central room, I want to be able to have a very dim, soft lighting here uh, just so I can walk around at night without getting uh, my poor eyes blinded and uh, being able to have a range of uh, this, let's just see what it actually is. 8.5 lux here, but this is one of the darkest places. 10 lux. 15 lux over here. Getting into proper layer, which territory has 7 lux. Oh, this poor depressing place. 6.5, 7. Uh, this table ought to be among the brightest places right now, yeah. 15 lux or so. So this is actually, this isn't too bad. This is usable light for r reading a newspaper. But then again, I have pretty good eyesight, so some might disagree. But yeah, it is now way past dinner time. And I'm going to thoroughly enjoy making a salad that I'm able to see for the first time ever. So thank you for watching and Make sure you enjoy yourself. Oh, and uh, just for comparison, uh, the, the, the light level you could achieve in the kitchen was pretty much the same uh, as in this room. So if we turn around, we have a bit more light in here right now. But that's more of a dimmer set to like 10%. That is a difference. Although, I must admit, I did discover a few bugs with the old light. Yuck. 